Hey everyone. Well, Pika just elevated the entire AI video game with their latest update, Pika 1.0. Seriously, this raises the bar, and when you see it, you are going to flip out. So today, we're going to take a look at what we know about version 1.0 and make some educated guesses in terms of where things might be headed. I've also got some information from behind the curtain of Pika, which to this point has been fairly low key. But honestly, I think that once you hear their story, you will be rooting for Team Pika. Also, because the pace of AI is ridiculous, I have a free AI upscaler that you are definitely going to want to check out. Okay, let's dive in. If you've been following the channel for a while, you'll know that I have been a pretty big fan of Pika since they launched. And look, I know that things were pretty weird at launch. These were some of my first generations. This is mimes in a grocery store, uh, followed by clowns in a grocery store, followed by clowns fighting mimes in a grocery store. And look, I know that the whole surreal and hyper motion thing was definitely not everyone's cup of tea. Personally, I did love it and I actually still love it, but it has been a real pleasure watching Pika evolve to where it is today. But this next era of Pika, well, this is what some are calling AI videos chat GPT moment. So I don't bro out like ever, but the thing that kept going through my head as I was watching this is this is sick. Uh, Pika has always had really great motion, but it looks like combining this with the new model, I mean, the results look stellar. The clips are short, but granted it is a trailer, so it kind of has that quick cutty movement. That said, I do have an idea of the video length. We'll talk about that coming up in just a minute. I was really impressed with this text to video shot, which they called out as an anime style. Um, it definitely has an sort of a Miyazaki-ish anime influence to it, but it also kind of reminds me of late 90s era Disney animation. Uh, either way, it looks stellar to me. As for new features, we'll be getting video to video as exemplified in animal locomotion, which also happens to be the first moving picture ever. So well played there. This is one that I am very curious to see. Uh, obviously the point of reference here is Runway's Gen 1. Although I think that this might be doing something a little bit different, namely because of of this, you know, the red horse in the night here. In this shot, you can see that there are trees in the foreground. That's something that Gen 1 does not do. Gen 1 will generally only react to things that are already in the frame. So even in this 8-bit example here, where we have some mountainous terrain in the background, uh, that's not something that you would necessarily get out of Gen 1. In fact, if this is indeed the source video, uh, Gen 1 would actually be trying to integrate all of the boxes and kind of gibberish numbers into its output. As a complete side note, Plate 626, which is, you know, Man on the Horse, uh, plays a pretty significant part in the film Nope. If you haven't seen that movie, definitely watch that movie. It is so good. Additionally, we'll be getting video resizing along with canvas expanding, basically, you know, video outpainting. But obviously the real jaw-dropping feature is the fact that we will have video in painting within Pika. It is kind of funny that Adobe previewed this in their Adobe Max presentation earlier this year, but have yet to release it. And uh, well, I guess Pika just kind of beat them to the punch. So you'll be able to do video in painting on your own uploaded videos. Uh, this is obviously a real video. This is not AI generated. This is a real woman walking down a street, presumably somewhere in Southern California. Overall, I'm really blown away by this video in painting. I actually spent some time going through and just looking at it frame by frame. And you know, if I'm going to nitpick, there are some, you know, little sections like here, if you notice the frilling on uh, the denim here is sharp and in focus, but if you move a frame or two, it goes soft. But I mean, that is really nitpicking. That said, when you move over to the black leather top, um, I think that if you did not know that that was video in painted, you wouldn't have any reason to suspect that it was. And for this sunglasses example, uh, clearly inspired by the famous monkey selfie, the sunglasses obviously track very well on his head, but the part that's kind of stunning to me is the fact that the reflection in the sunglasses also tracks. We did get a brief look at Pika's new web UI. Uh, that's right, Pika will now be web-based and Discord-based, so all of you Discord haters can now scream to the heavens in joy. The layout looks very clean and straightforward. I actually really appreciate that. Um, there is a button for retry, obviously reroll, reprompting, uh, and then this edit brush button, which I presume would trigger a pop-up. 
an area for prompting down here, and then obviously a magic wand for auto prompting, which actually I do have a lot of fun with those. So I appreciate the fact that that is there. So as of the recording of this video, there is only one video that exists outside of the promotional material. And that is a video done by Matan Cohen Groomy, who happens to be the creative director at Pika. So this is a text to video example. The prompt here is cinematic shot, Dolly in shot on a stylish Japanese girl with dreads looking off into the distance in a pink desert. The clip runs about three seconds long, which I think gives us an idea of what to expect in terms of clip length from Pika 1.0. Uh, but to me, the real stunner here is just the level of quality, detail and fidelity in this output image. This looks really, really, really good. And I'm presuming that this has not been upscaled uh, or run through Topaz or anything of the sort. This, I'm thinking that this is right out of the box. To contrast, this is the same prompt in Pika's current model. Uh, no cherry picking here, no negative weights, just the prompt as is. Now, what's interesting about this drop is that it comes on the heels of a bit of a press tour for Pika, uh, which is sort of surprising because they've been very low key in terms of you know public personas. But with articles in Forbes and TechCrunch announcing $55 million in funding for Pika, we now know that Pika is co-founded by Demi Gao and Chen Lin Meng, both of whom were former PhD students at Stanford's Artificial Intelligence Lab. Prior to Stanford, Demi worked as an engineer at Meta's AI Research Lab, while Chen Lin co-authored a number of AI research papers. Now, what's hilarious, in hindsight at least, is the fact that Pika was actually born out of failure. Namely, that Demi had entered into Runway ML's AI Film Festival, uh, and despite having probably the most technical team, they did not even place in the competition. Citing a very frustrating experience using the current crop of tools, uh, Pika was born. You can check out the articles on Forbes and TechCrunch for more information on Pika's funding. They are currently valued at $200 million uh, and some interesting details about their GPU farms. But what was interesting to me was Demi's quote on Pika's mission, which is not to create a tool for film production, but rather as a tool for everyone to be able to create. What we're trying to do is something more for everyday consumers, people like me and Meng, who are creators at heart, but not that professional. You'll also be happy to know that current plans do not involve monetizing. So for now, at least Pika will remain free. To sign up for Pika 1.0, head over to their website and register there. And yes, you do have to re-register even if you are already using Pika on their Discord. But before you do that, you're probably gonna wanna check out this new image upscaler. So Kriya.ai, who you may remember from the real-time image generation video uh, I did just recently, have released a free AI image upscaler. Uh, to use it, just head over to Kriya.ai and log in, and then uh, hit this upscale and enhance button. It is a really interesting idea in that just beyond being an upscaler, you can actually throw a little creative AI spank onto your images. So once again, taking our old friend, Daniela Van Denonk, the Dutch football player who looks nothing like this, um, and running her through Kriya. Um, up here in this slider, we have an AI strength, which determines how much you're going to allow Kriya to essentially hallucinate over your base input image. The upscaling factor, which we're gonna double here, and then you actually have an option to prompt and negative prompt. Uh, in this case, I just ended up putting photorealistic. And um, yeah, you can see it did its job. Um, that looks really pretty great. So interestingly, I did run it again and did not provide a prompt. And what was kind of fascinating is that Kriya just decided that it was kind of an old timey oil painting. Um, I thought that was kind of an interesting take. So the AI strength slider is something that you're definitely going to want to play around with a bit. Um, for example, in this image of this guy who either looks like he's having a bad day or he's about to give somebody a very bad day. Um, if we run it at the strength level of 85, you can see like it really affects him. Like it turns him into a much younger person. Um, the textures on the clothes actually look a little bit better. And then obviously the background is filled in with a lot more color and detail. But again, it does dramatically change his character. So there you go, another crazy day in creative AI. At the rate that this week is going, I'm pretty sure I'm going to see you guys again very, very soon. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.